Okay, put your Bible here. Let's go light the candle first. I think we need to, eh? Luke 2, verse 8 to 20. The Shepherds and the Angels. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, l lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, "Glory to to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased." When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All, all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her and, uh, and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Amen. Thank you. I'll call on you just now again, all right? Okay. She read that so beautifully, didn't she? Thank you, Fadzi. Well, I find this story actually quite remarkable. That's why I've entitled my sermon this morning, Remarkable Joy. I wonder what it must have been like, like to be on that hill that night. I really hope that when we get to heaven, we get to see all these things, you know, replayed again. I'd love that, to see it in 3D, all that had happened. And let me tell you why I find it remarkable. I find it remarkable because it's an ordinary time with ordinary people doing ordinary work, when suddenly this remarkable joy breaks through. I think often we feel in life that we have to work our way towards joy, that the conditions have to be just right for us to experience joy, kind of like a fairy tale. But no, that's not the way God's joy works. God's joy is open to any situation and to any person, even in the midst of a mundane or tread, a treadmill kind of a life, or even in the midst of grief. The joy of the Lord is possible. And maybe because this joy is something we don't really expect, perhaps that is why the shepherds, as they witnessed this happening in, in the ordinary, when the angels appeared before them and the the glory of the Lord shone around them, that they were terrified. Perhaps they had never considered the fact that God's greatest desire was to draw near to them. That the joyful acts of the Lord um, are not something we should be afraid of, but instead expect with a glorious anticipation. So maybe this Advent joy is something we have to look on um, despite what our journey is like at Christmas. Joy will come to us in the morning, the Lord promises. After all, we're much better off than the shepherds were. God is now dwelling among us. 
We don't have to wait as the ancients did for the coming of the glory of the Lord. It's already here in our midst as it was for the shepherds that day on the hill. God's presence is all around us every day, in every moment, in every ordinary situation. And all we need to do to gain access to it is to approach the throne of God and push through the barriers that we have placed all around us. You know, the barriers in our thinking and in our feeling that says joy is not possible for me or that God couldn't possibly care that much for me. We need to learn, as the, as serp, the shepherds did um, on uh, that Advent night, to substitute fear for joy. After all, the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. Did you notice that? Don't you find that remarkable? It's not just a message for the shepherds. That angel is talking to us too, to you and to me. The angel is saying, don't be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. So I think we should have a bit of a cheer, right? Can you cheer? Yeah? So much so that they'll hear it on the video tonight. Ready? Jesus has come. <laughs> okay, so for a good portion of this year, we've been looking at the scriptures through the lenses of a kingdom life, where we've learned to view the world and ourselves and every circumstance we face in life through the eyes of God. We learned that what we need to do is shift our mindset to stop focusing on the fact that the world is a broken fallen and sometimes awfully painful place to live in and to rather see this broken world through God's eyes as a place where we are deeply loved by our Savior who is working out a plan of restoration for this world's fallenness and he's doing it right here right now at this very moment in time. Over the last two weeks, we also spoke about the importance of carrying the Christ child in our hearts, uh, being pregnant, in a sense, in our hearts as Mary was, and then carrying him to others. We've also learned that in order to find true peace, we must be governed by the Prince of Peace. We have been gifted this hope and this peace so that we can rise above those challenging times in life and learn to experience what it means to live a good and, yes, even joyful kingdom life. It might surprise people to know this, but God actually wants you to enjoy the process of your faith journey. He's created so many healthy ways for us to experience pleasure, and so we must seek out those things. The Apostle Paul knew this very well, and in his letter to the Philippians, he talks about grasping this joy. In Philippians 4, he says from verse 1, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way. And he calls them beloved, and then he goes on to outline some examples for them. And the first is that they should have the mind of Christ. It's time to put on the kingdom lenses, the kingdom glasses. Then from verse, voice, verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. He is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, he says, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
Keep on doing these things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Look, see, says the angels, I have brought you good news of great joy. Joy is breaking into our world. It has broken into our world, into this moment, into any moment that is to follow in time. God has reached out and he is holding his people. I came across this old hymn recently and it perfectly describes our situations in life. It's about a man who needs to remind himself of how desolate life truly is without the Lord. And um, just bear in mind that he probably lives in the southern hemisphere. (laughs) So when he talks about December, he's thinking about deep winter. Okay, let me read it to you. How tedious and tasteless the hours when Jesus no longer I see. Sweet prospects, sweet birds, and sweet flowers have all lost their sweetness to me. The midsummer sun shines but dim. The the fields strive in vain to look gay, but when I am happy in him, December's as pleasant as May. His name yields the richest perfume and sweeter the music his voice. His presence disperses all gloom and makes all within me rejoice. I would, were he always thus nigh, have nothing to dread or to fear, No mortal so happy as I, my summer would last all the year. Content with beholding his face, my all to his pleasure resigned. No changes of season or place could make any change in my mind. So blessed in the light of his love, a toy would a palace appear, and prisons would palaces prove if Jesus would dwell with me there. Dear Lord, if indeed I am thine, if thou art my son and my song, say why do I languish and pine, and why are my winters so long? Lord, drive these dark clouds from my sky, thy soul-cheering presence restore, or take me up with thee on high, where winter and clouds are no more. Isn't it beautiful? So the author has really learned the lesson of this joy in the presence of God and how to seek it out. And I guess, what is a modern day example? I was thinking about the day in which television was black and white, if you're old enough to remember that. (laughs) I am. We got so used to watching TV in black and white that we forgot that the reality is that we are actually living life in full color, right? And that's what joy is. Joy is seeing life through God's eyes and through a kingdom lens. The fallen life is black and white. The kingdom life is full color. When we do that, when we experience life more differently and in a way that God intended, joy will break through. That is what it was like for those shepherds that night when the kingdom of God broke through and reminded them of the world in which they really lived in. And so I was thinking of an example, Fadzi, do you want to come up here, of how we could illustrate this point again so we get it firmly in our minds. And uh, we thought we would show you a, a movie clip and Fadzi is going to tell us what we're going to watch um, hot, the hot and here's a who clip. Yeah, let's see. Hello. Who's there? Um, this is the mayor. The mayor? The mayor? <laughs> the mayor. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I knew there was life on this speck. The speck? What speck? Well, um, I don't exactly know how to tell you this, but you're living on a speck. Well, I 
Hate to disagree with you, oh voice from the drain pipe, but I live in Whoville. Well, then, Whoville's a spec. <laughs> right. Okay, seriously, who is this? Is this Bert from accounting? Uh, no. This is Horton. I'm an elephant. Okay. Horton, fake name. Where are you? Well, from where you're standing, I guess I'm in the sky. Compared to you, I'm enormous, which is saying something, because I've slimmed down quite a bit. I swim. <laughs> Your whole world fits on a flower in my world. Oh, man, this is even pushing it for you, Bert. Don't believe me? Watch what happens when I put you in the shade. This is absolutely impossible. Dark. Dark. Light. Dark. Light. Dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light. Ooh. Don't you see? We're in the middle of some kind of amazing cosmic convergence. Two vastly different worlds, miraculously crossing paths. Mind colossal! Yours minuscule, yet somehow we've managed to make contact. If you think about it, it's pretty amazing. Is everything okay down there? <sighs> I don't know. You tell me. You're the one holding the spec. I'm the one holding the spec. <gasps> I'm the one holding the spec. It's a good illustration, hey? <laughs> I find the story of the shepherds and the angels remarkable because it reminds us of what our reality really is. And once you have seen the truth, you can't go back to living in a different reality. What happened that night changed the lives of the shepherds forever, and it changed ours too. We can't go back to living in Whoville <laughs> when the kingdom of God has broken through. This will be a sign for you, it says. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. How remarkable. God leads them to the Christ child. And here is, is what to look for, says the angels. But notice there's more to discover when eyes have been opened to the possibility of the kingdom life. The moment that the shepherds had became more miraculous for they did not just discover one messenger angel, but a whole host of angels praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Are you beginning to feel it? Is the joy beginning to bubble in your heart as you consider what world we really inhabit? God's glory is all around us as it is in the highest heaven, and on earth his peace rests among those whom he favors. And he favors us because he desires to be in relationship with him. And when we join with God in this kingdom life, then he can be at work and give us the destiny he has always planned for us. Our destiny is right there for the taking. And last week we learned that our destiny was to be a people of peace and now we are seeing that we are destined to experience God's joy, a joy that lasts no matter the situation or the circumstance. But here's the thing about joy that I think many of us forget. Joy is not just an emotion, it's actually a choice. When we encounter God, you can't remain in the ordinary. You must choose to head to the extraordinariness of the kingdom. Sheep will not do when the Lamb of God is within reach. And so the shepherds do something very unshepherdy, if that's a word. <laughs> they leave the sheep, their concerns, in the hands of God, and they seek out the Messiah. And this is what we must do as well. We must leave behind our fears and we trust our lives to the hands of God, the one who created it all. This is the only way we are going to free up space in our hearts 
to experience hope and joy and peace. When we surrender to the kingdom life, we will find that he will fill us, he will refresh us, and he will strengthen us no matter what we face in life. So this Christmas, let us be like the shepherds. Let's hasten to the Christ child in the manger and trust that the rest of it all is in his loving hands. So as we journey this road, let's remind ourselves of what we've learned so far. On the first Sunday, we spoke about carrying the Christ child in our hearts and then carrying him to others so that they too can find hope in his name. And then we spoke about being governed by the Prince of Peace and, and then guiding others on this pathway, pathway to peace as well. And now this Sunday, we are learning we need to enjoy our relationship with God and the remarkable joy that he brings to our lives. The song of the angels has become not only the song of the shepherds, it's now our song too. In verse 20, it says, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And now let's add our voice to this praise. I love what David says in Psalm 30, verse 11 to 12. He says, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and you have clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Let us pray. How wonderful you are, God. How wonderful an act of sending your son to us. We are in such desperate need of him. Thank you for foreseeing that and for sending him. Thank you that you are a God that isn't far away, but who comes near. You are a God who experienced life even from birth. You have experienced what it is to be lowly, to be meek. You've experienced what it's like to mourn, to suffer. And yet you came. You came so that we might find joy in your name. Lord, I pray that um, as we journey through life in its ups and downs, that we will not forget this precious gift you have offered of us, to us of your hope and your peace. Help us, Lord, with this next step, which can be hard at times. Help us to find joy, your joy, the joy that's everlasting. May it filter through our hearts to the very deepest of places so that it can rise up no matter what we are facing. Thank you for your remarkable joy. We praise and honor your name today. Amen. Amen.